Kiza na tambo la mile Kentucky So dila gime wena my coaches Au stufu sami sama na she Au guazi kumshi ya kanda gaja Imani winzi wano kujeni mezo yami Pena wena mshambi jola nonga Na imani nonga ni gamga ni gamga ni Maru ya zubutu mena ngala ngali Mkilu kupendu le yami imani Sibile skofu na bobo gaba gali that some of you sent to me on Instagram. I haven't seen the questions. They were taken offline as soon as they landed. And so we have Shashu in the room, my socializer, and she's gonna ask me the questions and I'll answer them. I'm hoping that it will be interesting, as interesting as they, they assured me that the questions are. But in the meantime, I want you to subscribe and click on notifications so that you get a notification every time an episode goes up. So, I look forward to keeping on connecting with you. Socialize Socialize me there. <laughs> Good afternoon, Pro. The first question reads, what do you wish to accomplish with the channel? Oh, wow. I, I, I hope that I discuss the questions that young people can, don't get to discuss with their parents. I hope I get an opportunity to talk about the brands that young people are bringing up as part of their entrepreneurship. And I also hope that I, I talk about academia, things in academia that uh, many young people are struggling with. Many young people are registered for masters and PhD and they, they're stuck. Some of them just stuck at the beginning, things that we can just deal with very quickly. I also hope that I, I, I actually inspire a lot of people, not just young, but young and old. I hope people get inspired. They get to wake up in the morning feeling encouraged despite all the challenges that they, are, they might be experiencing. Um, I have three questions. Uh, they are similar, but they were asked by different people. Okay. So the first part reads, any advice for young educators looking to climb the education ladder? And the other one, I recently graduated with a BED from tax and I want to become an academic. Any advice on the route I should take? Yeah. And then the last part reads, how does one move from being a teacher to a lecturer? Do you have to have a master's degree? Okay. Good questions for people who want to get into academia. Here's the thing. First thing, don't think about climbing the ladder. If you want to climb the ladder, think about being the best educator in what you teach. So, so let's just say you're teaching mathematics at the moment. You're a teacher. You just have a B, B ed degree. You majored in mathematics. And you're a, focus on being the best mathematics teacher ever. Do the work, not because your principal is asking you to do, not because there are complaints, just do it to the best. You know, when you're doing the best, there will be many people who want to work with you. And then the second thing I would say, look for mathematics associations. In mathematics or associations in your discipline, there's the English one, there's the History Association, History Teachers Association, those kinds of associations, that's what, what I'm talking about. Google them. In mathematics, for example, we've got the Association for Mathematics Education of South Africa and you join them and the issue is when you do that you're showing agency you're not sitting in school and you're saying i'm a teacher and i want to be a lecturer and you think simply because of your qualification someone has to get you there get into the association participate you learn more you make a, you, you 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 develop a network some of those people that will see you in action at the conferences are academics they will know if there's a research assistant position if there are scholarships here and there but you don't go there for that you go there to grow as an educator and if you do that you you actually become better at your work and and what you do what you learn at the association what happens at the association what other teachers are doing network with teachers in former model c schools in private schools don't just think when you're complete Network with other teachers in other areas. See what they're doing. If they're doing mental impaired, you ask them how they are training them. If there are workshops at Dean or at St. Stephen's or at whatever, go and learn for yourself. There's a, there are also lists, uh, email lists uh, of mathematics teachers or history teachers, whatever. I am on one on mathematics teachers. Even though I'm not a school teacher, I find it so informative. 
You see teachers discussing the, the curriculum, teaching a particular concept. You can ask a question as a teacher if you're struggling with a particular concept, and then they can, you grow. When you grow like this, people will notice you, and people will point you to the opportunities. It will not come simply because you're qualified. Am I saying qualifications are not important? Hey, qualifications are important, but by themselves, they will not make you climb the ladder or help you succeed in your academic career. So what qualifications matter? I don't think any university will hire you because you've got a BA ed or a BA degree or an honors degree. Or uh, you'll be lucky if you get a, a, a job to teach with a master's. And if you get it, grab it and know that you got it even if you don't have the license to practice and do your best, right? Uh, but the license to practice, the, the best way to get into an academic job is you, you, you must know that you must have a PhD, right? You must have a PhD. If you don't have it already, you do it, okay? But as I said, the PhD alone, the qualifications alone don't do much, okay? You have the qualifications, you go to conferences, you, you learn to write, you learn to present your work, you learn to publish your work. It's a whole lot of things. But know that on this podcast, we will also share with you how to develop an academic career. So if you follow those, you'll get a sense. But at the moment, I'm just throwing ideas, and I hope you get this. But let me tell you a story, perhaps, uh, as, I, as I end on this question. You know, many years ago, I was working for an NGO when I started my PhD, actually. And then I was collecting data at some school in the township in the West End of Johannesburg. And... Um, you know, I would get there to that school at around 7 o'clock, right? 7 o'clock, I needed to collect data in the morning. And maybe I would end at 11 when the math classes are done and I'll go to, to the office to work. And, you know, every day I get there, I wait in the car, I wait for the teachers to come. And I would see this teacher, the teachers coming in late and so on. And there was this teacher, uh, it was winter, who would stand at the door um, and occasionally she would, she would look inside the door and say, shut up. You know, she would sit sometimes at the door in the sun and I would say, hey, how are you? And so on. And one day, as I was going to the class, the mess class that I was going to, to record with my cameras and so on, and she, she came to me, she said, hey man, please, please tell me, man. Yeah, I don't say, wow, you're a man, 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 you're a so I said to her, uh, no, it's possible. You can you can go in. You can go in. What if because she used to see me coming in with someone who'd help me with the with the uh, uh, camera. And then I said to her, you know, unfortunately I don't think you will hope you will cope working with me because I'm not sure. Um, that you can work the hours that I work. You see that I'm here at seven. Maybe you don't know. I get here to the school at seven. The whole day we record. After that, I get, I go to the office. I do the work of the office. When it ends at four, I start working on on the thing. I, I, the weekends there's no stop, like it's work. And yes, it's very nice because you come here when I'm at quarter to eight. Uh, you teach. You even have time to enjoy the sun. Uh, and uh, one o'clock, two o'clock, we are done to a car. So I said, I don't think you will cope. Uh, so, so she was very surprised. Kuti, I work such long hours. And the reason why she wanted my job is because I looked happy in my job. She thought my job is easy. Now, if you want academia, you also want to, you must want it for it. Don't think it's easy. Don't get there and expect that you, you won't be expected to teach. Because some of you think academia, you don't. You must love teaching, because you are going to teach university students. They are going to challenge you. You must know. You must love in interacting with young people, and then you must love research, because otherwise it's not going to work. And then of course in your university they are going to say you must have community engagement projects or social responsiveness projects. Which means you must like development. You must like sharing this work with other people. You must like making your work useful for the community around you. So it's not, and then there's a lot of admin that I'm not telling you about. Admin like marking. Marking, you might have to mark 300 scripts, 
uh, and there are deadlines, you know? So it's not just as simple. Students want your attention. They will want consultations. Or, and if you love your job, you want it to be good. That's the key. I loved my teaching job. I taught at school. And I loved my teaching job. And I loved my students. I had a lot of afternoon classes. I loved it. I interacted with people. So do that. And then you will succeed as an academic. But, you know, if you think about it, this is a formula for any career. Love what you do. Socializer. Is there a third question? Yeah, there is a third question. Thank you for that. Um, have you always had a passion for education? Yes. I mean, as I said, I mean, education, for me, I guess it's a passion for education, but more than that, it's a passion for young people. You know, it's like I love young people, and the best way to interact with young people is to, uh, through education. So, so, and that's why I, I, like, I love teaching. You can't say you love education, but you just want to do research, only you don't want to teach. I've always loved it. I'll do it even today. I'll be out very easily get into a school and teach. No problem about it. Some people think teaching is a low class um, a career. It is not. You see me now, I'm in essence at the bottom of it all. I'm a teacher. Great. Thank you. Now, question? Uh, fifth question reads Why and how are you so amazing? My goodness. <laughs> Amazing. Wow. Thank you for the compliment. You are so, so generous. You are very generous to say I'm amazing. I don't know what the meaning of amazing is. Note. Note. Not everybody thinks I'm amazing. You must know that in this world, there are people who think I am so unamazing, so hopeless. They do not want to see people like me alive. So, and everybody has got that. And me, I'm fine with that. As long as I love me and I love other people and I, I strive to make me and other people around me happy. Great. Uh, the next question reads, I'm re I am rewriting my tree, but I want to apply it to UCT. Is it possible? Of course it is possible. Um, uh, the tricky thing is, of course, if you apply this year, the closing date for applications, online applications at UCT is the end of May. So you actually don't have time. And then they will need you to submit results. And the latest results that you have is your metric results, the metric that didn't go well. Okay, so you'll be judged on those. And, and I don't know what they look like. I don't know why you want to rewrite. Uh, but uh, uh, those results might not put you in good stead. So here's the thing. We have 26 universities in this country. Don't, put, don't bet on only one university. Don't bet on one. My advice would be, you should apply to other universities as well. If I were you, I would even apply to a, a TBET. Because it is not a good idea to bet only on getting into UCT, especially if you are rewriting. Because what if it doesn't go well? And the thing is, you'll be competing with so many students who are not rewriting. They will be sending their grade 11 results, and their results are, are just amazing. And you are sending your, re your results on a, on a trick and they're not good enough. And, and then, and then the, the assumption is that you won't make it and you'll be judged on those. So apply to other universities. You can be very successful having gone to a university or University of Technology or even TVET as long as you focus. Next question reads, I'm currently a student in UNISA, want to do my postgraduate here in UCT. What advice do you have for me? Okay. Here's the thing, advice for everyone who wants to do postgraduate studies. When you do postgraduate studies, you don't follow the name of the university. You must follow the supervisor and the, where the expertise is. So I would ask you, why do you want to do your postgraduate UCT? What is that postgrad? You see, the way you ask that question, is like you just want the name UCT. You are not saying, I want to do environmental sustainability at UCT because there are top people. When you're a postgraduate student, that's how a postgraduate student should think. You want to go where you know there's expertise in that area. Like, I want to go to TUT because I know they are big on nanotechnology. They do a lot of work on nanotech. That's why I want to go to TUT. Uh, I know that at other universities it's not as big. You, you want to have that kind of thing. I want to go to NWU because I know analytics. Uh, they are big on analytics and I can do... Um, uh, 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 my, my honors and masters and PhD 
narrative style. So, so I want you to think that way. So I'm not going to ask your, I'm not going to answer your question in terms of what you should do or whether it's possible to go to university. I'm going to ask you to do some homework. If you're at undergrad, you want to do your postgrad, you have decided which area, find the university that, that at least in your view is good in that area or has got people that you believe uh, are good in that area. Universities offer different strengths and, and you should choose your postgrad based on that strength. You must have a why. You must be able to say, why do I want to go to your city? And it must be a satisfactory reason for you. It shouldn't just be that it's a name, okay? And so make your decision well, do your homework and check what it is, why you want to go to a particular university. So I just think I should pause here and then say, you know, look after yourself. Tomorrow, what I'm going to do is to continue with the questions and, um, and we'll continue taking them that way. But in the meantime, remember, you love yourself and be you and do you. See you tomorrow.